It's wonderful to see you, whether you are watching us live on this Sunday, August 30th, or whether you're watching this sometime during the week or months from now. Welcome to Unity Northwest Church. As I mentioned, I'm Reverend Elizabeth Mora, and I'm the senior minister coming to you from my home right now. And even though we are coming to you from a different building, what really matters is the fact that you are here with me because you are the church. The church isn't a building. The church isn't a minister. The church really is the divine appointment that you keep with yourself, with spirit, and with everyone here at this church. So thank you for being church. That's really what you're doing when you do this. You are being the church alive in the world. So if anybody ever says, my church isn't open, oh yes, your church is open. Your church is open every day in your heart. And you get to have the benefit right now of what I call pajama church. I don't know what you all are wearing out there. I have dressed up today. I am wearing a dress. You can't see it too much because, you know, but there you go. I've got like a whole dress on today. So there's no Dilbert happening dressed up. But I will admit that I'm not wearing high heels like I normally do at church. I shouldn't have told you that. Anyway, again, it's so good to have you with us. And as I've put in the chat box already this morning, I put down on the screen here, um, you have time as we go through the beginning part of the service today to ask a question if you're on live with us. And if you're watching this later and you have a question, you can still ask it. You can still post it in the comments here and I can email you back or you can send it to the church. So just because you're watching later, if there's a question that's on your heart about church, about unity, about religion, about what's going on in the world, whatever it might be, feel free to ask me anyway, go ahead and send me that. So today is your day. Today is the day that you get to ask your questions. I say that Sunday service that you've always wanted, you've always wanted to come and have that question answered, you get to ask it today. You get to make sure that it happens. So as we go through the next few minutes of the daily word and an opening prayer and things like that, you can go ahead and pop me a question at any point in the comment box here. All questions are fair. I may not be able to answer them all, and I'll do my best. And now let's go ahead and open this sacred service in prayer. I invite you to gently close your eyes if you would like and assume whatever position works for you. For some of us, it's folding hands still. Some of us, it might be open, outstretched hands. It might be eyes open, it might be head bowed, whatever it is for you. And by doing this, you let your body know, your mind know, that now is a sacred time that we turn within. I am turning to the divine truth that's within me and all around me in this world. We open this service with prayer, with harmony, and with oneness. At our core, we are all connected and we are all one. We all come from and go to that same great mystery. I can feel that connection now throughout the world, that every person, whatever they are doing right now, I am one with them. And where there are differences, I remember this oneness. And where I am already connected, I remember it and strengthen it. I am one with all that is. That is the nature of God, the presence of the divine, the truth with a capital T. Believe it or not, I am connected. We are one race. We are one family. We are one humanity. For this truth, we are grateful. And so it is. Amen. I'd also like to invite you 
to go ahead and type your name down in the chat box. Most of you have already been doing that. And once again, whether you're watching now or later, go ahead and type your name, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook, type your name down in the comment section and let us know that you were watching. It's a way to stay connected right now. And welcome to all of you. Special welcome today to our new folks. If you are watching for the first time or one of the first times, we still want to be able to welcome you. So if you would send an email to the email that's on the screen here, unitynw at yahoo.com, we would love to send you a simple welcome email to let you know a little bit more about the church. So send that to Betsy, our assistant. She will send you information about the church. And a second special welcome today, we have Unity Northwest West with us today. I've just decided to call them that. Hi, Unity Church of Ames, Iowa. We have a nice uh, relationship with Unity West, Unity Northwest West. We are sort of Unity Ames East. So my friend Rev Deb is the minister out there. We went through school together. We are on a support call with each other every couple of weeks. So Deb and I decided that um, to give our churches a chance to be part of another church when we're off, we're going to join each other. So welcome Unity of Ames. I see Jim was already on this morning. Sally will probably pop up later. We're really glad to have you with us this morning. And thanks to you for welcoming our folks last week when I was out camping and several of you have asked. Camping was fantastic. I know some people don't like it. Some people love it. It was fabulous to get away. One of the few things you can do right now. And it was just so special to simply sit in a chair in the trees and just enjoy them. It was really, really wonderful. So thanks everybody for asking how my trip was. Um, and I had nature in forest. I had, I had church in the trees, I guess is what I should say. Church in the trees this Sunday. So welcome. Good to have everybody back with us. And as we go through the service today, knock on wood, we have been doing really well, but just in case things go a little hinky um, and I get kicked off or the sound is funky, keep hanging in there, try again, come back on. I will keep trying to come back on, but that's not gonna happen. Comment throughout the service here. I love to hear from you. This is hopefully not a one-way thing. I love seeing your comments and knowing who's online with me. So check in if you haven't already. You may have seen some names pop by. Go ahead and say hi to folks there. And in a minute, we'll check in and see everybody that's been with us. And so now we're going to go ahead and share today's daily word with you. Many of you are familiar with that, but in case you aren't, especially if you're newer to Unity, this is the daily word. It's our publication that comes out six times a year. If you don't have one, I highly recommend that you subscribe. Just go to Unity. Dot org. It's where you can find a ton of fabulous things, but get yourself a daily word. You can even get the app so that it comes on your phone and you don't have to have the paper, um, but we like the paper. Sunday, August 30th, 2020, light. The light of God surrounds me. You'll recognize that from the prayer from protection. The light of God surrounds me. And when darkness casts shadows in my life or in the life of someone I care about, I call upon the divine light that lives within me and expresses as me. Just as the light of the sun illuminates the sky, the light of God illuminates my mind, brightens my soul and warms my heart. Even during life's darkest moments, the light of God is always shining within me just as it shines with all people. Basking in this light, I find the strength and power to lift myself up. Through acts of service and loving kindness, I can be the light that helps guide others through any darkness they may be facing. Every smile, kind word, thoughtful deed, or offer of help has the potential to brighten someone's day. And from Psalms 112.4, they rise in the darkness as a light for the upright. They are gracious, merciful, and righteous. The daily word for today. And I know that you all are beacons of light. 
out there in this world right now, always shining your light, and especially now taking a moment to think about anybody in your world that needs a little brightening, send them that light. Send them in consciousness some light. And maybe when we're done today, you send them a quick text or a phone call or something like that. Those little drops of light make all the difference in the world. All right, so we are checking in to see who's with us this morning. I see lots of folks over in the comment section. So I'm gonna go ahead and let everyone see who's here. Hi, Patricia, what a glorious day to join Unity. Oh, thank you, wonderful. Good morning from Chris. Update on plans for church opening and financial status. Yes, thank you very much for asking, Ruth Dallas. I will go ahead and address that. If I forget, pop it down again, but I should remember. We've had a couple requests for that. Blessings from Hal Jeanette, Joan is home from rehab, yay. And Kat's joining by phone, hi Kat. Jim from Iowa, great to see you again. I saw you last week when I was watching. Uh, good morning from another Chris, Karen and Mary and Mickey the dog is here. Happy Sunday. Hold on, I'm going to turn my fan on. I'm getting a little warm. I just get myself all excited because you're all popping in and I get myself a little worked up. Hi, not too late for a question. Another one about the health and stability and the finances. Thanks. I love that you guys are asking. Hi, Anita, the new grandmother. Another good morning from Ruth and Dallas and Tanya and the girls. Great to see you. Hi, Karen. I'm back and you're home. That's good. We're all moving through what we're going through. The trip, again, thanks for asking, Chris. It was fantastic. Hi, Cindy. Don't you love that picture of Cindy with the, uh, I think it's the ocean. It could be the Gulf. It could be Lake Michigan, but you look so happy there. I love it. And good morning from Brenda, our board president. Good to have you on. And whoops, things just zipped down to the bottom here. Hello from Ames. I said, wow, what just happened? There we go. And hi for, oh, we've got so many on. I better hurry up here, gang. So hi, Nancy from uh, there. Um, you need to read my article to find it, but you need to select more to get the link. I'm not sure what that's about, but maybe Jeanette, you can say more. Hi, Char. Hi, Arturo. Hi, Pat McRoberts. Great to see you. It is a glorious day. Uh, thanks, Karen. Like I said, I'm, I'm wearing one of my fancy dresses today. I decided to dress up for everybody. Hi, Isabella. Um, and good morning from Ames again. Hi, Linda. Oh, thanks for all the fashion shout outs, everybody. I love it. Thank you. Got it at Macy's, love Macy's, which will always be Fields to me, but I'm gonna try to call it Macy's here. Okay, great, Patricia, what's the gospel of unity? Great question, I will come back to that. Beautiful morning prayer from Mary Ellen. The Bustons are in the house. Adriana's been helping me. You may notice that I have a different color back here. We are in the process of redecorating and Adriana is my decorating guru and I'm so grateful for her. Hi, Molly. Hi, Oliver, Julie, Roberta. This is where I get out my uh, romper room mirror and say hello to all the beautiful people. Jeanette, Evelyn, <laughs> Atlanta. I call her Atlanta, but it's Alana. Arturo, for the Ask Reverend Elizabeth. Oh, since politics these days cannot be separated, what does one do? Oh, my gosh. Yes, my husband never goes easy on me. Thanks for the hardest question of the day. We'll talk later, Arturo. Hi from Bobby, hi from Mark, and prayers for Chris's cat, Sniper, who looks like he's at the end and we're holding Sniper in prayer. A few more good mornings. Hello, everyone, we see you. We see you and it's so great to have you with us. Wow, that was an awesomely long check-in. Great to have you. And again, those who are getting up online with us a little bit later, still feel free to put your name there because you are just as welcome and just as important to us. Okay, and we are now going to move into our time of meditation. I invite you, as we did during the opening prayer, if that's comfortable for you, to close your eyes, gently settle in, Signal to your body and your mind and your spirit, oh, this is a time for you. This is a time of meditation to benefit me and to benefit the world. 
Here I am, Lord. Use me. Here I am presenting myself for the good of humanity. And I will put myself out there and show up however I'm needed to be the love and the light of God. And so I can do that. I take these important moments to step away and go within for meditation. I open up this gift to myself, to the world, by slowing down and I become present. The concerns of the world fade into the background and I bring forth into my conscious awareness the presence of God. I divinely connect with all that is good and true and beautiful. It is the most natural thing I do to come back to myself. And as my breath easily comes and goes, I use it as an anchor to be present. With my breath, I am right here, not in the past or the future. The breath only exists now. When I'm with my breath, I'm in the now. I breathe in, I breathe out. I breathe in health and happiness and I release love and joy. Breathing in and breathing out both are such a gift and a benefit and a support to me right now. I rest now with my breath, with my breath. This time is such a blessing to know that I've been doing this meditation and this practice with others from my unity churches. I feel that connection even deeper. In this very moment, we have lived the truth of unity. We have lived oneness by connecting to our hearts, to the breath that breathes all of us. We are one. And so it is. Amen.
Welcome. It's that Sunday. It's Ask Reverend Elizabeth. The doctor is in. My mentor, my role model, Lucy, she's in. I'm in. And it wouldn't be complete without my Snoopy doll. I know I'm a 56 year old woman with a doll. But he comes in mighty handy. So he's wearing his graduation outfit because he is wise and can answer all of these questions, as can Lucy. So when I get stuck, I have some people to ask. And when I get stuck, the first people I'm going to ask is you. As we ask these questions today, I invite you to consider what your answer might be if you were up here. So I did my best to get questions during the week and to not look at them. It's hard because you can sort of see the first couple of words, but I would save them in a folder. And then I took pictures, screen captures of that and put it on my phone. So I'm gonna start with the ones that already came in and then I will get to the ones that have been coming in. So if you recognize your question, you can probably get a little excited, but I won't give any names out. Uh, there were. I forgot to mention that in the uh, e-blast that I sent out. So if you put a question up today, we'll see your name, but no names for those of you. And thanks really to everybody who asked questions. So this is again, an opportunity for you to ask the hard questions uh, that you might not have been comfortable with or something that uh, you ask, believe me, is something that someone else is wanting to know. All right, here is our first question. I admit I enjoy watching various paranormal shows, a guilty pleasure. Shame, no, just kidding. While I find them typically harmless, fascinating, and thought-provoking, I'm often left with this question. In unity, we believe in one power. How do we respond to what appear to be evil spirits? Hmm. I get this question sometimes around Halloween. What do we believe about evil spirits? And I'm going to go ahead and come over here to full screen and put Lucy off there. All right. Evil spirits. There is a lot that is written in Unity about that. And we don't believe in spirits as that they exist separately. What we look at most things like this and everything in the Bible and spiritual teaching is, we start by looking at it metaphysically. We look at it, what is going on with our thoughts, our beliefs, our actions. That's the first thing that I always look to. And the first thing that comes to my mind is evil spirits. Well, heck yeah, I got lots going on up here that I could call an evil spirit. And so while we live in a universe of oneness, we believe and we know the oneness of God. Here in this existence, we, lead, we live in an awareness of a duality, not an actual duality, but a human and a spiritual understanding of things. In the spiritual realm, everything is perfect. And if you're going through something right now, you probably want to punch me through that screen right now. But everything in the world of God is perfect, the absolute ideals. In the relative existence here on earth, in this world, where I believe we're learning, we've come to learn, the great school room, there are challenges. There are even activities that we might consider evil. It's quite frankly a word that I stay away from because it's a really harsh label. And when I look behind evil actions or what I consider, let's say, an evil person in the real world, not just on TV or these shows, but even what I think is evil that is actually here, behind it, there is so much more. Not an excuse for a bad action, but it's not actually evil. It's a misunderstanding of principle. If everybody understood principle, we wouldn't have harm, we wouldn't have racism, we wouldn't have evil spirits doing evil things. We wouldn't have evil thoughts. And even to use those words, I'm reminded again, I come away from the word evil. Error thinking is more what Charles and Myrtle taught. What are, so are there error thoughts? Yeah. That's what we're here to work through. That's what we're here to learn. So doing what you do by coming to church and being conscious learning about that. Now, do spirits actually exist? Uh, I don't know. 
I know lots of you have direct angel experiences that you've told me you can see them by me, you know they're there, and there may be, there are things that we can't understand. What I do know though, is there are angel thoughts. There are angel actions that we take right here in this world. So whether there are or aren't, I can make it so. I can make angel activity happen. And I can make evil activity happen if I want. And so in my consciousness, what's most important is what am I creating? That is the most powerful thing of all. No matter what somebody else is creating, that is secondary to what I choose to create as far as angels and evil spirits. So again, ours is more a focus on what's the spiritual side of it? What's the metaphysical side of it? Work on that and then see how that affects how we experience other things. Also then a second question was, I don't believe in my years in unity that I've ever heard anyone address the question of abortion. Is there an official stance? Well, you're right. I've never had that question. <laughs> I think you just beat Arturo <laughs> for the most difficult question, but thank you for asking. Where I've heard it addressed actually is in the Buddhist culture, uh, Thich Nhat Hanh addressed it in a way that I think is very appropriate and would work in unity. A lot of what is in Buddhism, which is why I follow it as well as unity, comes over here. And it's the question of where is the greater harm? Where is the greater relief? And so you have, not just with abortion, but with a lot of issues, you have competing needs, if you will, competing souls that, you know, I mean, something as simple as a sports team, the souls on one team want to win, the souls on this team want to win. And we don't know what the biggest picture is for all of these souls. Um, I have been involved in the movement of women's rights since I was in high school. So personally, not speaking for the church officially, but personally, um, how this affects women is very important. I believe it's a women's rights issue. And it's so much more complicated than just abortion. It leads into economics. It leads into the medical industry and access to healthcare before an abortion would be needed. So it's legal in this country. Um, it is a difficult issue and we don't take official political stances, but we do hold up that we search for and hope for the best for all beings. And having said that, unity is overall made up of more progressively minded people. And usually when you're progressively minded, religiously, you also are politically and socially. Doesn't mean you have to be, but this is an issue people are struggling with right now. Um, some people are upset that unity is addressing some of the issues right now. And again, it's because in general, if you were to poll most of us, the nature of a unity person is to be more progressive and wanting something new. We're called new thought. And so they do tend to be more left leaning with their politics and with their social issues. So um, there isn't an official stance in unity. And I think that it's a much deeper question of where is the suffering? Where is the relief from suffering? And it requires deep conversations to really get at some of the root issues. Thanks for asking the, the difficult questions today. I appreciate it, folks. Okay, and then my next one is, what's the difference between Christianity and Buddhism? Well, there are a lot of overlaps, as I've said, and it depends on how you define each one of them. So, you know, get 10 Christians in the room, get 10 Buddhists in the room and ask them to describe their religion. You're gonna get 20 different answers, folks. So first of all, if we're defining Christianity the traditional way, it is the belief in the save, salvation of our souls through the death and rebirth of Jesus the Christ. So that's simple. Buddhists don't believe in that. They honor that Jesus is a master teacher, uh, a prophet, if you will, um, but that isn't a tenet, obviously, of their belief. But both Christianity, and I'm going to veer off into New Thought Christianity, if you will, for a moment. New Thought Christianity, like we are, for those that consider ourselves Christian. Buddhism, 
very similar, a teaching of oneness and interconnectedness. However, there is a focus on Buddha, there is a focus on Jesus. And yet within New Thought, we honor all teachers as well. There's a great book, Living Buddha, Living Christ by Thich Nhat Hanh that I would recommend on this. And Thich Nhat Hanh says, study other religions and then come back to your own. And I did that. When I got really deep into Buddhism, I actually considered that ordination instead of unity. And I lived it for a while. And while I love it, it wasn't at the core of me the way that unity was. So I, I never left unity, but I realized, yeah, I want to incorporate as much Buddhism as I can. And at the core, I grew up in this country. And so they really do blend together very well with unity with other traditional Christian um, denominations, not so much um, because there must be Jesus. So again, unity, while we also take the teachings of Jesus, have opened up and include other teachings so that they can come together. Very much a lot of overlap, love, compassion, equanimity, all these traits and the things that we're looking for and that we, the altruistic way we wanna be is really the same in both. And even within Buddhism, there are so many different paths there that we can't just nail it down to one Buddhism. But I am a Buddhist Christian or a Christian Buddhist. Wrote an article about it. I'll put a link up this week and you can take a look at that. Ah, what are some spiritual tools that you feel are most effective for self-forgiveness? Ooh, I've got a great one. I've got two great ones. And I think they both come from Catherine Ponder. I love the rose visualization for forgiveness. I picture the other person and myself and a beautiful blooming rose in the beginning, in, in the middle of us. And I don't know what's so magic about that, but there's something magic that happens there to just sit with us with that. Another thing that I've done, this one I know comes from Catherine, is to write an angel letter. So my angel to their angel, get it out of this human level where we're mucked up and go to this higher level where there's no problem. The Christ of me has no problem with anyone in this world. Just tell that to the human me. And so there is really something powerful. I have written those letters and had relationships just boom, transform. So write an angel letter at your highest level of the best of you wrote to the best of them, and then put it in a drawer or burn it in a ceremony or put it in the freezer till it cools down. And the last thing I love for forgiveness is Ho'oponopono. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And you can read up on that Ho'oponopono. All right. And it seems like we're all being called, regardless of our political beliefs, to into action to play out the Last Supper, each disciple had a role. Each of us to play out a huge transformation. Mm. Can you comment on how to keep activism, compassion, and hope alive? And then they answer their own question. I go to music and laughter to ship, shift my energy to clear despair. Yeah, music and laughter, big. I have to say, so in all my years of speaking, public speaking, everything, but especially in unity, I've always thought and said, Oh, we all think it's a big time, you know, that whatever time we live in is a big critical time. So, you know, every four years, this is a critical election, every tragedy that happens. And, and I've always thought that's just normal. We, we all think that, and this is life doing what life does. And to some degree, that's true. And to some degree, I don't think that's true anymore. I think we are in the beginning. We are in the middle, rather, of a really big transformation. And people that write about these things on a cosmic level say things like that. You know, Matthew Fox and Don Beck and Ken Wilbur, the, those who came together to put spiral dynamics, well, they didn't come together, but those who put spiral dynamics together said that that's where we're at. We're at the very beginning of this momentous leap into second tier consciousness, into Christ consciousness. And I do think we're there. I do. I could be wrong, but I guess in the one sense, why not assume that we are and say, wow, I am living in a historic time that's going to make a difference in a much bigger way. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to do everything I can the way that I'm called. 
And self-care must happen. We have to. Too much TV, stay informed for goodness sake, but too much of it over and over again. If it's depleting you, if you can't then go out and do the work, then it's too much. We all know that Jesus walked away and took breaks from the crowds and the work that he did. You certainly get to take breaks. So do what makes you happy. Martha Creek has this advice, I'll give it to you. Do something that makes your tail wag every day. That'll help keep you balanced. Do what you need to do, encourage people to vote, march in the street, make phone calls, pray, whatever it is you wanna do, and then put it all away and go watch a video, go take a run around, go play with some grandkids, go watch videos of grandkids on YouTube, whatever it is. We've got to stay short up. We've got to take care of ourselves. So all the ways that you can do that, please do it. Okay, why does God give us or put us through so many trials and tribulations? It's unbelievable what I have been through. I will share them with you one day. It's pretty painful. Some people go through life with no issues. It's as if they go through unscathed and others seem to be faced with many trials. I do believe in karma. Um, she has an extensive memory. I have not been told that, I have been told that it may not be what you have done, maybe something from what your family has done. I am at a point of not knowing what to think anymore. Thanks for asking and being vulnerable. What sort of that question of why do bad things happen? How is this whole thing working? So the first thing is if you're going through something tough, if you can set that question aside right now, that's helpful. That's a deep theological, philosophical, emotional, spiritual question. So, you know, if you have had a loss, if you are uh, going through an illness right now, if you are depressed, if you are anxious, please take care of that first. Work on just working with your outlook, your mood, your brain chemicals. You may need some medication. It's all right. So I have struggled with depression and anxiety at different points in my life. And those are times when you take care of yourself. Don't worry about figuring out why God is doing what God does or who's living what kind of life. Be super selfish for now. Take care of yourself. See a therapist, see a spiritual counselor. Let your doctor know. Join a small group, take classes, read, find something funny, all those things. And then when we're stronger, we can look at, when we're well is when we want to look at how is this working so that I can be more effective? And what I've learned, I have the benefit of having talked with so many people doing this work is I honor whatever suffering you're going through. And everyone truly is going through a lot right now or in the past. I have talked with people who have gone through horrendous childhoods, physically, sexually, emotionally horrific childhoods that they thought they'd never get over. And they have with a lot of counseling and a lot of work. Uh, my own father, I went through a period that was really difficult when he got Alzheimer's and then was too violent for any homes, um, ended up in psych ward after psych ward and finally was dumped in a nursing home where he was murdered. And it was awful and it was terrible at that time. And we got through that as well. And I know people that are going through diagnoses and that's not to say that your suffering doesn't matter because when you're in it, that's the last thing you wanna hear. But when you're out of it is when you can hear, oh my gosh, there is this huge world. And when you think that you've got something special, my therapist said that to me a long time ago, I was bemoaning my hard life. She's like, what exactly has been so hard, honey? And, I was just, and she goes, honey, that's what everybody who comes in here tells me, I'm like, wow. It was a little harsh, but it's what I needed in the moment. So figure out where you're at and either get some self-care, some self-help, some psychiatric help. And then when you're well enough, dig in, take metaphysics with us and learn how this is the wheel of life. 
And I don't know about karma from my parents or my last lives. The big thing that I know about karma is it starts now and it moves forward. What am I setting up for my future? How can I be the one, if it is a family issue, to break the cycle? Let me break the cycle. Okay, let me switch over here and see if I've got some other questions to go through. Christine, let's see. One presence, one power. Someone else admits a fascination with the paranormal. Sure, it is fun to play around with that. Um, evil is when a person is not in touch with their Christ self. Thank you so much, Carolyn, that is. We also get um, evil is living backwards, evil lives spelled backwards. There are bright and dark energies and I'm careful to avoid them like heavy metal. Yeah, there are definitely energies and vibrations. Um, and that is much different than saying there's an evil person. Um, so Neville Goddard's teaching to unity and beliefs, are they in agreement with? Ah, okay. So I don't know too much about Neville Goddard other than great quotes that I've met, I, I've read. I admit that. Um, my sense is that because he's taught by a fair amount of unity teachers, uh, that he does agree. And then his technique on how to create our realities by feeling the wish fulfilled. Yeah, absolutely. So that's very Joe Dispenza as well. Uh, so without having actually read it, um, I, I know that enough unity teachers, he's considered, you know, unity adjacent. So it is about creating our realities through our thoughts and our feelings. That's unity 101, folks, creating it that way. Here's the trick that what we're talking about for sure is creating in consciousness. Secondarily, may it create out there? Absolutely. Does it a lot? Absolutely. Does it always? No. It's not Newtonian. It's quantum. So absolutely. Visualize whatever it is that you want to visualize. And guess what? Right now, as I visualize, my brain doesn't know the difference. My body, I'm living it. I'm living it. Live it every day. And don't worry about when it out pictures because the timing is not ours. There's so much more at play here. So work from the inside out over and over again. And then what you find is that what happens in the outer is less and less important. I want to mate. I want to feel loved. Guess what? I am love. I am love right here. And I can give and give and give and it will never end. That's creating from the inside out. And then yes, you do become attractive. You are operating at that vibration. Abortion, a choice nobody wants to make. Uh, Chris, I can't judge it as a personal choice. A woman's right to choose. I don't believe it in his birth control. Sure, a, a feeling that many of us have. Yeah, and again, such a complicated issue that we can't even begin here, um, you know, look into it from a feminine perspective perspective from a feminist perspective. Um, it's just like saying, you know, uh, black on black crime is more important than police on black crime. These are complicated, deep systemic issues that are much more than just what we're talking about. So with abortion, with Black Lives Matters, with gun control, I try to bring so much compassion and it's not easy to try to understand. Tail wag, my kind of advice, growing through the soul challenges. Yes, eating clean foods and exercise. Thank you. Great answers. Okay, Tanya, I read an article from my nurse practitioners that was compelling. Anxiety is built from living in the future, living in the past depression. Isn't that great? It's a wonderful understanding. Now is when we create happiness. That's where to live for. And it does take work. Thanks, Tanya. It takes doing stuff like coming on to church every Sunday by taking classes. And I know sometimes I just want to sit on that couch over there and just binge out on Netflix. <sighs> and I get myself off the couch and I go watch it, you know, a meditation, YouTube or something like that. So when you can congratulate yourself, set a partner, it takes some work folks, especially if we're predisposed to, de to depression and anxiety. And in this time, it may take more work. Oh, the difference between mental illness and evil. Different ministers have different takes on this. Oh, so let me give you mine. And then, Bobby, um, you can tell me, you know, what you've heard others say. Um, mental illness. Mental illness, if I look at it at the same 
as physical illness, spiritual illness, any kind of, um, to begin with, any kind of thoughts that I'm holding. And there may be a physical component. So, you know, uh, Charles was born with, well, not born with, but Charles eventually, you know, he had one leg that was injured and he wasn't able to totally fix that in his life. And I believe there are mental things that some of us may not completely fix in this life. Yes, I do believe in multiple lives. Um, and I have come to, I have come from a belief. I'll give you this one, Bobby. My belief is probably was what some of the ministers you talked about were. If I work hard enough, if I use these techniques, if I use unity, if I know the truth, I can fix anything. I don't believe that anymore. And I'm okay with that because that became harmful. It wasn't compassionate to what I'm seeing and experiencing in the world and in my life. There are things that no matter how much I've applied, it's just not shifting for me yet. So I now believe that we absolutely can make a difference. I don't believe that we're victims over here and there's nothing I can do about it. I can always move myself towards health and sometimes I will get to it, whatever it is for now. But it's more about, you know, the cycle of life. You know, I will work with it, I won't. And I believe that there are things that you need medication for, period. I'm gonna just say it. Some unity folks won't like that. I have seen people struggle. I have seen people kill themselves because they thought that they were failing in a unity way or in a spiritual way. And I don't think it has to be that way. So I think it's okay to have an issue that you're dealing with physically in your body, mentally here, and to get help when you need it. I'm also a big fan of everything that we do. If crystals work for you, whatever it is, keep trying. And I believe that God brought us medical science too, and that it's okay. And that that's what I think compassion is, to be able to say that I can deal with this mental illness and it doesn't mean certainly that I'm evil like we used to think it. And it doesn't even necessarily mean that I'm holding error thoughts. It may be something going on in here and that the best thing for me would be some kind of a treatment. The third basic unity principle. Thanks, Jean. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Um, it's what you can do now to be happy and peaceful. That's right. So get those tails wagging, folks. And it may seem simple. It's like I hear those sometimes. Like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I'm supposed to listen to good music. No, but really, <laughs> really, we have to. We have to do it. And so I think I got through most of it. My apologies if I missed anything. If I did, just email me this week, gang. Um, Rev Elizabeth Moore at gmail.com or you know, put it in Facebook if you're comfortable, but you can email me. Hey, you didn't get to my question. Can you answer it again? So I can end with the financial question and how Unity is doing. Oops, I think I missed Arturo's. He asked the really hard one, didn't you? Hey, Arturo, put it back in the chat box. I'll try to get back to that. You asked that hardest one. Okay. And so a lot of people piping in that, yeah, medicine's okay. Medicine's okay. How's the church doing? We're great, and financially, we're not so great. So there's truth. Brenda's going to be telling you more about it in a couple of weeks. We're going to have a kind of a mini online town hall, and she's going to tell you about it. And donations have been down quite significantly. They've been going down for a number of years. I think most of you know that's the nature of church right now. Church is on a huge decline. And in some ways, COVID just hastened that decline. So there are folks that don't like to watch online for right now, even though we would love to get back, we're just not there. Um, people have lost their jobs. People are being careful with their money. We get that. And so um, we were very blessed to have the payroll loan to help us out in the short term. And it did so that we're okay for now. However, the trend is not good for the long term. So we're going to be working as a board more on building our prosperity consciousness. So it's all a reflection also of where we are in our lives and what is our consciousness as a church. So we are starting to be in these times, our church and others, of being more bold to let you know that if you value Unity Northwest Church, 
you need to make it a priority in your support with finances. And I know that's a tough thing to talk about right now, but some of us are okay and haven't had a big financial upset. And there will always be those who can give more generously and those who have smaller pot to give from, but their um, widow's might makes just as much of a difference. And we ask you to hold that in prayer and to know that to keep the church going at this rate is difficult. Um, each month or so, we are blessed by someone who generously gives a thousand or multiple thousands, and that saves us for the month. But that's not sustainable going forward. So think about um, your giving as we go forward because it is a challenging time for us and we want us to be solid so that we can keep doing what we do. Um, politics, that was the last question then. Yes, the intersection of politics and spirituality, that is what is changing right now. I've talked a little bit about it, but let me say that not all unity ministers and churches feel the same way, but most do at this time. There has been a shift. There has been a paradigm shift in unity this year, I would say. It's been building. But no longer do we abide by, well, Charles didn't want us to get involved in politics because Charles isn't here. We're here. And we see that politics is actually humanity. We can't separate them out, especially on issues like gender equality and financial inequalities here and all of these issues. So we are addressing them from a social humanity perspective. And when people call us political, that's them. That's not us. To care about people, call it political if you want then. Heck, I'm political. Most political leader I can think of, Jesus always talking about the poor and the disenfranchised. And you know what he would be doing if he were here right now. He would be speaking out for kids in cages. He would be speaking out for those who are suffering. So let us all open up our hearts into new ways of being with this and to bring our teachings to politics because you can't separate them out. I used to try to keep God out of work. You can't keep God out of work. God goes with me everywhere I go everywhere I go. So let's bring God into that too. Let's bring in oneness and humanity into politics. Stay strong together to get through this period where some of us are saying, I can't believe you're doing that. You're not unity. You're not unity. So we're pointing fingers and let's just keeping on doing what we need to do to move forward for people and individuals, what Jesus would be doing and bring as much love as we can and then turn it all off and go take a break and let's support each other as we do it. So thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and I love here, let's do, let's get this here. It is all spiritual, including politics, soul decisions, all of it. Thanks, Bobby. I give you the last word on that. I love that. You got it. God blessings, everybody. Fantastic questions. I appreciate you all so much. We'll do it again before you know it. And now let's hear some music. <laughs> When I tried to change it But after many years and miles I've finally come to realize I can simply change my mind To rearrange it And what I believe What I believe What I believe is true is true for me and what I believe, what I believe, what I believe is true may not be true for you. I hope you're all up and dancing. I am. I've learned what seems to be is not reality. Cause whatever we desire, we will see it But we can get past this reflection to the 
mirror of the heart where our vision of this world is blessed by spirit and what i believe what i believe what i believe is true is true for me and what i believe what i believe what i believe is true may not be true for you illusion wears me down after a while delusion would let me drown in denial so with everything we see is only a dream i must wake myself from this hallucination cuz when we come awake we understand only love remains then we bring this love to every situation so what i believe what i believe what i believe is there is only love for me and what i believe what i believe what i believe is true there's only love for you and what i believe what i believe what i believe is true there's only love for me and you love for me and you Thank you to devotion. And now is our time to recognize the gifts that we've given in the ways that we've done that by holding our love offering in our hands. And if you would like to give, you can go to the top of this Facebook post and there's a link there or go straight over to our web page and you can give there as well. Thank you so much for all the ways that you do give. You can also send a check by snail mail and the best of all is set up an ongoing check from your bank to us. So for those who, to that question of how we're doing financially, all of you who can set up an automatic deposit or an automatic check to us through banking online, um, that will go a long way to help us. And so let's say our blessing, divine love through me, blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give and all that I receive. Thank you, God. As you give, you are receiving. Quick announcements here for you. Thanks for sticking with. We're going to continue online. Again, we will have some more information. We continue to research um, whether we can come back and equipment and things like that. So do know it's ongoing for now. The best thing for us is online, uh, but we continue to keep a watch on this and do our research. Please continue to post on Facebook. And yes, someone commented that they love to see all the continuing comments after I was done. Me too, keep the comments coming. And now it's a really fun thing that we're going to be doing today. We are going to be recognizing our volunteer teams. I want to bring on our beloved Teddy. She has had this passion in her heart. This is all Teddy's doing, I want you to know. She felt that we, she just had this in her heart that she wanted to recognize her volunteers. And she took ownership of this. I have to tell you, if you want to see anything happen in a church, just take ownership. We're like, yeah, do it. Take the reins. <laughs> so she said, I really want to recognize our volunteers. I'm trying to get us equal. There we are. So Teddy was getting ready to do this. And then we closed. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and so Teddy did not give up. She yeah. said, I want to make this happen. So Teddy, this is your first month. Tell the group um, about why you're here with us. Okay, well, um, why I created this program was to say thank you to all of our uh, volunteers who, uh, who give endlessly 
to the church and they donate their skills, their talent, their time, their patience. And I've seen so many of our volunteers running around uh, before church, after church and pulling, um, uh, pulling things together for our uh, Sunday service as well as uh, during the week. And so I, I said, we have to say thank you to these people. It's, uh, you know, it's, um, it's um, a good thing to have happened for them to see a smile on their face when we say thank you, which is the most important uh, two words that we, can, that we have to say. And so today is the first day of Unity Northwest Volunteer Recognition Program. And the first group team that we're gonna recognize are the chaplains. And the chaplains have uh, continued to be of service during the pandemic, and we continue to be in service to our congregants. Um, so uh, Betsy Nickerson, okay, is, there you go, um, is the director of this program. Betsy has been in church every day through the pandemic, um, uh, giving her, her uh, talent to whatever is, whatever can happen. And most of all, she's the director of our chaplain program. And this is what she has to say about the program. She said, to be a chaplain is a joy and a privilege. We are so honored to be able to serve our fellow human beings on this planet by holding them in the light of the highest good and greatest joy. This is transformative work for the chaplain as well. We have an ironclad guarantee that all of our stuff comes up when we pray with others. As God's healing works through all of us, thank you all for giving us these, these opportunities. Many blessings and much love to all from Betsy. Okay. And so now we're going to recognize our chaplains. Uh, we have a group picture up there and there is B. Salas, um, Chris Schaefer, Chris Silvett, Mary Ellen Simmons, uh, me, Teddy, uh, Betsy Nickerson, Gail O'Neill, and uh, Gail Petersdorf. Uh, Catelyn Amick uh, was uh, a chaplain uh, until the end of 2019, and now she is part of our board. All right, thank you, thank you for your service, uh, Carolyn. And so, woo, give him a clap. Yeah. What we. Yeah, all right, for our chaplains. So our Unity Northwest Church is proud to honor our congregate volunteer chaplain team who have served Unity Northwest Church and make a valuable contribution to our congregants. We are grateful for your steadfast commitment to our church and our mission to serve this community. Congratulations to our Unity Northwest chaplain team you are the best. Be healthy. Be happy. Be safe. God's blessings upon you. Love you guys. Woohoo! Woohoo! Thank All you. Right. Thank you. There we go. Blessings. Look at all this love coming out to our chaplains. Bless them being in service. Being a volunteer group is the friendships. Oh, that's right, Jeanette. When you do this kind of work, um, you create so many friendships. And Evelyn, thanks to you, you've been one of our volunteers also on the Circulation Day, which will come back around one of these days. And then I would like to also give a thank you to our prayer team. They're related to the chaplain team, but a little bit different. You may not know it, but this is an invisible team that is behind the scenes. So we don't let their names be known so that you're not aware of how, how many people are praying for you and it doesn't feel awkward. But when you send in a prayer request to the church, which you can do anytime, by the way, to Betsy or go online at our webpage, there's a prayer page. You can do a simple one there. And so your name, just your name, no issue. We don't know what, you know, Cindy it is. We pray without knowing any of the issues. This prayer team holds you in prayer every day. So we send out a list once or twice a week of those asking for prayer and a whole group of people. So you know who you are. Thank you, prayer team, for staying in the background and holding this prayer watch every day and supporting the prayer chaplains. And thank you, prayer chaplains, to all of you. Uh, so appreciate 
how much work you do. You can tell the nature of a church and where their prayer consciousness is at by how many prayer requests actually reach the minister. Very few actually get to me because you are doing what Jesus wanted us to do which is minister to each other. So thank you so much, prayer team, chaplains. And I just want to, uh, Evelyn's gonna be there next year when we did that. Um, oh, we have chaplains on from Ames. Thank you, that's right. I know that you have a great team there. Powerful love, we love you all. Thank you to Teddy. And now I am going to just let us know a couple of things. Don't Things are happening. Oh, ah, there you go. My phone is ringing through my computer during a Sunday service. Excellent. World Day of Prayer is coming up, everyone, September 9th. Check your emails. Uh, check the website at unity, um, unity.org. Um, and then there's a link down there for World Day of Prayer. We are going to be hosting, um, joining in with a live stream for the region and I hope that all of you can join. So we've got some videos that we've recorded and you can join us a week from now. Metaphysics 4 is starting Wednesday, September 16th. If you have not been part of the group taking metaphysics and you want to take metaphysics for, send me an email. Let's check in on where you're at because we are at the last part of this. We are at the advanced, advanced, advanced of metaphysics. Uh, reminders that uh, read your e-blast so that you can stay up on what's going on and videos are available and you can donate anytime. Also, be safe out there, wear your masks. Boy, it felt like I had another announcement or two. Next week, we will be here with Fundamentals of Prayer in honor of World Day of Prayer coming next week. Hope you'll join us for that. Jump over for coffee on Zoom in a minute. And our new feature of Zoom Fellowship is prayer chaplains are there. What a great day after they've been recognized to join up and to be part of our prayer chaplains. And I'm gonna just pop over another couple of things. Look at all these great love and love to our prayer chaplains. Thank you to everyone for staying together. Thanks for all these blessings, folks. And remember, you are amazing and you matter and you are loved. You were here and we needed you here. Thank you for being here this Sunday. Thank you for being with us in the future, wherever and whenever you're watching. You matter and we will see you over on Zoom in just a moment. And God bless you and here is the link Again, it is up top to join us at Fellowship. Those of you that do tiny URLs, this one is so easy to remember. It's Sun Fell for Sunday Fellowship. So if you're ever out and about, you want to join on right after church, you can't remember the link. I can't find the link. Where's the link? Tiny URL, Sun Fell. I love you all. God bless you. Uh, stay safe. Be safe. Keep asking questions. Love you.